Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today, I want to share the basics of how AI models actually work. No complicated stuff here, just the core ideas every developer needs to use Cursor, Kilo Code, Cloud Code, or any other tools out there more effectively. There are three core ideas that we will talk about here. The first is the high level of how AI models work, followed by tokens, pricing, and rate limits, before finally discussing security and privacy. So AI models, or large language models to be precise, are basically complex engines for predicting the next text. They aren't magical thinking machines that understand and execute things the way human does. When you write a prompt, the process follows a simple three-step loop. First, whatever you type gets broken down into tokens. In the world of AI, tokens are the native language of LLMs. Think of them like little chunks or building blocks that make up your words and prompts. For example, a short word like I will be one token, and a longer word like identification will be split into two tokens. And we have some example of token calculations on the right side here. Short text like hello, how are you today become six tokens. While longer tags, such as the prompt for a break breaker game here is 19 tokens, and a simple console.log code becomes 5 tokens. So the more tags you feed the AI, whether it's words, code, or instructions, the more tokens it will use. Once your prompt is turned into tokens, the model then tries to guess the most likely next token. That's all the model does. It's not actually understanding your code or reasoning through the problem. It's using statistics to do pattern matching based on the very gigantic amount of text it was trained on. After that, it picks one token, add it onto the end of your prompt, and immediately repeats step two to guess the next one. The model loops very quickly, about thousands of times per second, until it hits a stop condition. The result could be a full function, a bug fix, or 10 paragraphs of explanation. It's all a highly educated guess created from that token prediction loop running over and over. Once you realize that AI works through predictive pattern matching rather than logical execution, a lot of things suddenly make sense. The prompt you provide isn't an exact instruction. In programming, you are instructing a computer what to do, so the results are deterministic. If you write return true when x is less than 5, then you can expect to get true as long as the value of x is less than 5. That's the entire point of programming. It's deterministic and reproducible. The computer does exactly what you tell it to do. On the other hand, prompts are not code. When you send a prompt to AI model, you are not telling a computer what to do. Instead, you're giving it a starting point for a prediction. This is why the results aren't deterministic either. Let me show you a quick example. Here I asked Cloud to write a function to validate an email address. The first only check the pattern in Python with regular expression, and then the second is written in JavaScript using regular expression, but it opens the canvas by itself. And then the third one here is also in JavaScript, but it checks for the length of the local and the main part of the email. As you can see, the results here look similar and correct, but they still require adjustments. AI models don't understand your code, they don't think about your architecture, and they don't reason through your problem. They only predict tokens, and that's the end of the story. Based on millions of code bases it has seen, the model then suggests patterns that match your data the most. This is why you need to provide AI with as much relevant context as possible. The tech stack you use, the libraries you use for styling and helpers, the pattern you implement, and so on. One way to solve this problem is to use agents.md file, which is an open standard compatible with many coding assistants. In that file, you can provide the context and instructions to help AI coding agents work on your project. Next, there is another limitation of AI models that you need to be aware of. And that is, AI models only know what existed up to their training cutoff date. Anything released after that, new libraries, new APIs, security fixes, deprecations, doesn't exist in their world. This is why sometimes AI gave the wrong answers. When you ask how to implement authentication for a brand new library, the model might give you an approach that used to be safe but is now deprecated due to a vulnerability. You follow the AI, you ship it, and months later you get breached. 
The solution here is quite simple, always double check the generated output, verify anything security related, or check against the current documentations. Even better, use tools like Contact7 that feed the latest documentation directly to your agents. Models are great at explanations and boilerplate, but they're not a substitute for real, up-to-date documentations. And finally, there is one more important parameter for all AI models, and that is the context window size. The context window is like the AI short-term memory. It's the limit of how much information the model can keep in mind at once. Everything you say, every word, sentence, or code block takes up space in this memory, and that space is measured in tokens. Now, different AI models come with different context window sizes. For example, the latest Gemini models support up to 1 million tokens, while Cloud Opus 4.5 can handle 200,000 tokens, and DeepSeek models come in at 164,000 tokens. Now, having a larger context window doesn't necessarily make the model better. It just means it can take in more information at once. In fact, for many models, performance can start to drop when the context window gets more than half or about 75% full. Research shows that AI has a loss in the middle problem. Models pay the most attention to the beginning and the end of your conversation, losing track of a middle information, which ironically is very similar to how we remember things. Think of the time when you had a long meeting. You might remember opening agenda items and closing action items clearly, but the middle discussion about database schema, that might be blurry to you. To avoid a context trap, restate critical requirements in your most recent message. Don't assume the model retains earlier information, brief it like a new team member every time. In summary, AI coding assistants don't run logic, they predict patterns, and knowing that helps you use them a lot more effectively. Next, let's discuss tokens, pricing, and rate limits. Token counts and context window length don't only impact performance, they also significantly influence your causes. If you're not paying attention to how many tokens you're using, both in your prompt and in the model's output, you can hit your rate limits or blow through your budget way faster than you expect. For example, here I have a controller file in JavaScript, this code simply performs create, read, update, and delete operations on user data. Now, I executed a prompt here to refactor the file, and then I asked it to give me the full updated file. It costs me 7 cents, and then when I run it one more time, but asked to just show me the updated or changed lines, the cost is 4 cents. That's only half of the first prompt. Now, if you have a full team making requests all day, with nobody considers optimizing their prom, your bill can jump from $500 to $15,000 really fast. So, to prevent this from happening is quite simple. Just be mindful of the prompts and control the output. Don't ask for full rewrites if all unit is a diff, and don't ask for a full explanation if a one-liner is enough. Tiny changes in how you prom can save massive amounts of credits. Now, let's talk a bit about rate limits. Every provider has limits because inference, which is the process of generating output from models, is expensive. The limits are measured in RPM or requests per minute, TPM or tokens per minute, and RPD or requests per day. And these limits are shared across your entire API key or organization. So, you might be debugging a critical bug that creeps to production. You run one more request, and suddenly you get hit with a rate limit exceeded. It turns out your teammate batch processed 10,000 lines of code documentation requests at the same time. Or maybe your CI-CD pipeline uses AI for code review and burn through your token budget. Now you can't deploy until the limit resets and the pipeline can run again. One way you can avoid this is using a pay-as-you-go setup that let you monitor usage, split providers, and failover automatically when one service gets overloaded. Next, let's talk about security and privacy. This is the part most developers skip, and it's usually where things go wrong. For instance, when you use cloud to develop your company's internal tool, where does your code actually go? Most people would say anthropic, but that's not always true. There is a distinction here that a lot of people don't realize. The company that creates the model, like Anthropic, OpenAI, and Google, isn't always the same company that actually runs the model when you send a request. Those are two different roles, the model creator and the inference provider. For example, here's the Cloud Opus 4.5 page in OpenRouter. 
If we scroll a bit to the bottom and select the provider tab, you can see that there are several providers for this model. There is Anthropic, Amazon Bedrock, and Google Fairdex. If you open another model that's open wake, such as GLM 4.6, then there are even more providers. All of these providers have their own privacy policy and retention rules. They may also operate in different regions or countries. So when your company's security team says don't send code to external AI providers, well, which ones do they actually mean? Who's actually receiving your prompt? Is your tool routing it somewhere that security never approved? A lot of leaks can come from that gap. Security approved using GLM model, but then you use it from other providers instead of ZAI for example. If the provider gets compromised in the future, then your code leaks. So before you put anything sensitive, it's worth doing a 30 second check. Open your AI tool settings, go to the about or privacy section, and look at who is actually handling the inference. Then check the retention policy, make sure it matches whatever rules you need to follow. It's boring, but it will save you from disasters in the long run. And then there is the other issue, which is data training. A lot of web interfaces, especially the free ones, do use your conversations to improve their models by default. So if you include your company's authentication logic into a web chat window, that code might end up as training data. And that means patterns from your code can show up in suggestions for other people. It's basically the same old idea. If the product is free, then you are definitely the product. APIs are usually safer because most providers don't use API data for training. But again, you have to verify them to make sure. Some tools offer zero retention modes, some offer enterprise tiers that guarantee privacy, and some never train on your data at all. You just have to know which one you're using. In short, always know where your prompts are going, make sure there is zero retention for anything sensitive, and if you're not sure how your tool handles privacy, probably don't type in your secret keys. And that brings us to the end of this video. Now you've got the fundamentals every developer should know to use AI tools effectively. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nathan and I help you build profitable apps and projects using AI and other tools. Make sure to subscribe if that's something you find useful. Don't forget to like this video, turn on the notification bell, all that good stuff as it really helps the channel to grow. With that being said, thanks so much for watching until the end. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye!